Fred Engerstein with the ATSSB Executive Board and I want to welcome to this session. Our clinician for today is Mr. John Rice. He's a professional percussionist from the Houston area. He's phenomenal. Could I make a suggestion? If you're a percussionist and you want to learn from him, I would come closer where you can see the, the sticks and things that are in the, in the middle and try and keep a, a view here a little bit. But uh, I think you'll, you'll get more out of this. He is a fabulous technician and has lots of good advice and I don't want to take any more of his time, so Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Ankerstein. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it great to start your day drumming away? Yes. Upsetting your parents, your neighbors, except they know where you are and it's not you. So it's okay. I'd like to introduce you to the most important stick in your bag. That's right. This is the most important stick that you have. And if you will use it wisely, you will be blessed with greater success in less time. I use one of these. I use a red number one art pencil. Because, let's face it, that music gets further and further away every year. And I use a highlighter as well. So this tool used in the way I'm going to talk to you about is a very powerful stick. Use it daily. It will help you play better. In our mallet selections, where we'll begin, on your handout you have my stickings. These are not God stickings. They're my stickings. But they work pretty well for me, and if you like them, I suggest you put them down. Or until you have a better idea, use these. Edit if you need to. If your teacher thinks there's a better choice for you, listen to your teacher. Okay? But this has worked out real well for me. So the first thing you do is you sit down with the music. You don't learn notes. You don't learn rhythms. You figure out how you're going to play it. You write in your stickings. Okay? This way you don't relearn something. You just spent three to four to five, six weeks learning the hardest way possible. It's so important on the mallet selection. I wrote every single thing down. I promise you, if you'll do it this way, it works pretty slick. And you may modify it for your own needs. That's fine. Once you've done your preparation with this important stick, then you can learn your notes and your rhythms and your stickings all at the same time. If you want to learn to play fast, learn to practice slow, careful, meticulous. In other words, nothing I did when I was younger either. Okay? But when I do that, I am blessed with greater success. Don't speed up until you have it ready to go. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. The flyer, I think, is right over here. Please get a copy. There's plenty of them. Okay? And you speed up gradually. All three of these excerpts have something I think is very, very good to know. They all look and sound like they want to go faster than the tempo that's indicated. Don't fall into that trap. This piece right here, for example, you look at it and you kind of hear it, yeah, yeah. You go that fast, you're dead beat, folks. <laughs> you're just dead. And you don't even know. One of the, fun, the uh, counting tricks I use inside my head, since I can't turn my metronome on, say this for me. Don't play too fast. Don't play too fast. Don't do that. Now do it this way. Do a tenuto. Don't play too fast. Don't play too fast. Don't play too fast. Don't play too fast. Don't okay, if you get that running around your head, you have a metronome going on. And if you say tenuto. Tenuto. Say it that way, that articulation. I don't know, you hear the wind players. Well, that well, doesn't count to me. Yes, it does. It's just in here. Instead of right here as well. Little tricks like that can help you legislate against your own humane tendency to speed up. <laughs> Now, who else in this room has that tendency besides all of you? All of me. Okay. So these are silly games I play with my own brain to help me play better. I'm going to hit 60 pretty soon. It's taking me a long time to figure these out. You're getting spoon-fed, except that you took the time to be here. So you've earned the right to hear the tip. Okay? Take the tip and have some fun with it. It's real important that you have your stance. You put your body in the middle of the playing range or tessitura for you music school people who want to remember to use that word occasionally just to prove you went to school. <laughs> I have to 
do it or I'll forget it too. That's the playing range. So I want to be in the center. Because then I don't have to do a lot of this. I don't have to do a lot of that. And then lose my place. So I want to be pretty much in a steady position where the only pivoting I do is right here. At your audition, it's real important for your purposes to perform on the instrument that you've practiced on, which is something I'm not doing today. So I use a, I have a small bar marimba at home I practice on, so everything's further away than normal. Oh well, I'll deal with it. But I'm not auditioning for a spot. A little trick of the trade, it's real easy in, the, in an audition or a performance to put your hands in the wrong place on the mallets where you have, you have not practiced with your fingers there. Carpenter's tape is cheap. Mark your mallet shanks. Does that sound goofy? Yes, it does. It tells you where to put your fingers, so you're in a hurry, you're all nervous. Set my body up here. Put my thumb right there and right there. And now I'm in the position that I've practiced. So I've positioned myself for success. Take a breath. Wish yourself and your friends well. As long as you play better than them. <laughs> and hopefully you'll play better than all of us. So enjoy.